ladies and gentlemen, people of royalty. How are we feeling today? Welcome back to Pokemon Mo Official Shiny Wars. Today is day six. It is the first weekend of the event. I'm sure a lot of people will be going very, very hard today. We'll probably be seeing a lot of very cool shinies, a lot of very exciting stuff. I'm currently at 57,562 encounters dry. Surely, <laughs> surely we, we, we got to get one soon, right, guys? Um, I would really like to recenter stream recaps starting today back towards more of a general Pokemon general re stream recap vibe as opposed to just my own personal shiny wars progress so i'm going to try to focus more on questions more on pokemon news forum post what the community is thinking i think it's really important that stream recaps represent the pokemon community what's being discussed what's being talked about etc etc so i appreciate you guys understanding that appreciate your patience hopefully you still enjoy shiny wars and are excited to see what happens but you know not everybody's interested in that and i want stream recaps to really reflect the pokemon community as much as possible so good morning good morning how are we doing i've got my eggs ready to go i'm gonna head over to it's currently daytime we're gonna head over to zangoose i've been camping that spot a ton should be pretty comfy hoping for a shiny zangoose or Viper. those are the better points here i'll see you guys with anything exciting interesting or good topics now, speaking of backdrops, do you guys remember what PS1 game I had playing for my last rare shiny? My last rare was Pranidos, right? And the game that I had in the background, if I recall correctly, someone could fact check me, I think it was Crash Bandicoot 2. So today, we have Crash Bandicoot 1 up on the TV for hopefully some sprinkles of good luck. Are you shiny charm popped at the moment? No. So personally, I don't generally pop shiny charms. Sometimes I will for fun or for like enjoyment or excitement or whatever. Pop in shiny charms during times five horde, times three horde hunts, generally not worth it. G generally not worth it. If you Google are shiny charms worth it, Pokemon, I have a video on it. And is Dunder status worth it, Pokemon? Uh, I have videos on those topics. I will say Dunder status is monstrously more worth it. And in my opinion, everything I'm saying is just my opinion. My opinion, I don't think you should ever 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 pop shiny charm on top of donator status in terms of efficiency obviously if you want to do anything or pop anything for fun in the game please do it um i'm not trying to talk on you know t tell everybody what to do it's more of like a my general advice financially it's not really worth it the hourly pay that you do for shiny charms without the donator boost like donator is just much more financially beneficial generally um much more worth it to get that 10 percent boost for a longer period as long as you play the game for like you know a couple hours a day or even like i think we count it once if you play it like three hours a, 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 a week or something like that it ends up being more worth it i, I forget i'll have to double check those numbers but donor status first shiny charms much more optional you'll always see me with donor status during events like this but shiny charms you will see me not i, I pop those for eggs if i'm making eggs that's when i pop shiny charm that's when things get a lot more pricey, so it's worth to shorten that shunt because you're at it. You're saving so many hours. I always say, um, if you pop shiny charm during a times five horde hunt, you know you're saving what uh, three hours. You're saving three hours over a thirty hour hunt when you pop shiny charms. But you're paying. What's the math? If 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 the shunt goes from thirty hours to twenty seven times uh, two fifty k a piece. You're paying 6.75 million Poke Yen just to save three hours. Generally, that is horrible. That's super not worth. That's horrible Poke Yen per hour. Okay, I'm about to um actually, so I really apologize. The nerd emoji is coming out. Someone was saying six times zero alpha is impossible. A six times zero wild caught. A six times zero wild caught alpha is impossible today. Yes, that is the case. However, let's see if I can find one. Before, let's do Faithful Encounter. Before, oh, there is none. Before Alpha's mechanics were finalized, one of the first ever Alpha, not whatever, the first Alpha spawn was a Crobat spawn. And this was beta tested, I believe, during the anniversary of the event. So before the mechanic was officially added, there was an Alpha Crobat spawn. We didn't know what it was and what it did. Um, but essentially, those Alphas weren't two times 31 guaranteed. Those Alphas were like, I think it was 15 IVs and above 
guaranteed. So they worked differently. And now that I'm explaining it, no, a six times zero wild alpha would still be impossible because that's how those Pokemon worked. Never mind. But the point is, old alphas used to be different, have a different mechanic. Um, you can, and now to breed, breeding a six times zero alpha is hilariously more difficult, more expensive, and more impressive than a six times zero normal Pokemon because it's harder to find alphas with zero IVs because they have that two times 31 guaranteed. And usually people don't breed those down and they pass and yada 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 so it's harder to find low iv alphas than higher ivs if that makes sense hey Pedrosti, any idea why zapdos isn't in my decks just number 145 slot that is a great question so most legendaries and certain pokemon won't show up in your decks unless you've seen them right so different people you can open your pokedex right now and you'll see the difference between mine and yours you might have more caught ot or more like a bigger or different number because depending on what legendaries you've seen in the game it, it could be different um, so for example like garatina cresselia etc like these only pop up when you go do like certain battles or storyline things uh what's another good example like for a while it was the same back in the day um back in the day or let's say back in the day but like a year or so ago less than that a year or so ago before you could catch the legendary bird articuno right that you still could get articuno in your pokedex but not caught ot right and the way you would do that the way you would get it like seen ot in your decks is you would go battle blaine like rebattle do a gym rebattle and blaine would sometimes have a rare chance to have like articuno or moltres etc so certain legendaries will show up in your decks so really good example perfect example look at this mewtwo so 150 is just missing from my decks mewtwo just isn't there however a lot of you guys may know mewtwo is literally the king of the hill style legendary in pokemon you can go hunt it in kanto and own it for a temporary period of time however because i've never done that not only is mewtwo not caught ot in my decks it's not even seen in my decks so i don't even really like that doesn't really register it or think of it as a pokemon so one day i'll have to go do that for full technicality complete decks now, that's a good question is it still is it still possible to catch a magikarp with hidden ability so generally you can't bring you can't like catch or farm wide just random wild pokemon to bring in hidden ability access pokemon to the game that's what alpha swarms do alpha swarms bring most hidden ability pokemon into the game and if it's not coming into the game through alpha swarms it's generally through an event or something like that um you can't just like go fish for example with an old rod and have some rare chance of finding a hidden ability magikarp it'd be kind of cool if you could I'm, I'm interested in that idea being possible the difficult part would be how do you balance that and what percentage um i think maybe that could be intertwined if we were to let's say nerf the spawn rate of alphas we've been talking the community's been talking for a while the the one times 31 and the two times 31 market is really hurting man it is a rough time i'm gonna, I'm gonna be totally honest there's a lot of positives to being a new player right now <clears throat> One of the biggest negatives of being a new player right now in Pokemo is that historically catching really weak, like good IV Pokemon for profit, things like one times 31, like Pidgeys, right? For the flying A group has been really good, really good money historically for new players. Like <clears throat> I'm talking like 200K an hour, right? <clears throat> Not at these prices. Like one times 31 attack male Pidgeys used to be like 7K, 7, 8K. And look at this half of that price if not worse it's just catching one times 31s and two times like those pokemon is just really really bad pokey yen per hour right now unfortunately so what you have to kind of adapt and do things like catch good base price pokemon things like rotoms things like dittos things like ninkatas these are really good beginner money making methods right now because of that but it sucks that alphas Alpha spawning so often and bringing a consistent two times 31s into the game. Um, netballs being as powerful as they are to be able to consistently catch Pokemon. There's a lot of things that probably need nerfs to help out the economy and to benefit everyone involved. Um, but a lot of players don't like nerfs. But in reality, nerfs will help us in the long run. It's just a short term thing where you're like, oh, don't nerf my favorite thing, you know? Um, so it's one of the things that we've been discussing a lot is i think we should nerf netball to three times catch rate I, I would love to see alphas nerf to like one spawn a day as opposed to every six hours so you get like three spawns an irl day um yeah one times 31 dittos being so cheap destroys the market it definitely is <clears throat> i think it's a negative for sure i will say there's positives and negatives to every market you can't just say oh a market is you know I mean, I would overall say this market is not great. I will, I will say, I wouldn't call it bad, but it's it's in a it's pointing towards a bad direction. I would say, unfortunately, a lot at least like good IV Pokemon are. However, to be fair, 
Pokemon being so cheap right now, good IV mons, dittos, etc. This is the time if you want to use a positive and abuse the market, breed your PvP Pokemon. It is cheaper than ever to get into PvP, get into gym running, get PvM Pokemon. Like, it has literally never been cheaper. As a new player, it's harder to make money right now, but if you can find the ways, do things like Payday Pickup, Nintendo Ditto, it's never been cheaper to breed good IV Pokemon. Things like your Jimmy Run Typhlosion, things like your Catching Pokemon, your PvP Pokemon, etc. Um, your Raids Pokemon, etc., etc. It's never been cheaper. So making these Pokemon now and breeding those Mons will reward you so aggressively in months to come. Like in three months or so, in three to six months, you'll be so ridiculously rewarded for having bred all of these Pokemon now. So that's what I would encourage. But we'll have to see. I think um, raids being released, permanently adding raids to the game, is going to finally give the demand that we need. Right now, there's just not that much demand for good IV Pokemon, but raids will give us that. Raids will give us that strong demand for good IV Pokemon because a lot of players are going to want to be able to do that PVM activity, and that's going to require a lot of very good Pokemon. That might be one of my hottest food takes is um, I think Italian food. I'm so, so I'm going to get so much flack for this. This is just my opinion. I don't believe this is an objective statement. This is just my food opinion. Um, I think Italian food is like bottom tier for me. Like I think it is like it's not bad, but it's like D or C tier, right? Like I, like, I love food. It's no food's bad, but like I think Italian food is like C or D tier. It, it, it like it is so because I, I don't know how to explain this. I don't because they there's not a, how do I explain like, my personal preferences I love Asian food because I love sauces and Asian food uses a lot of dark savory sauces and that's something I really value name one dark savory sauce in Italian food like a bals balsamic vinaigrette and I hate that I don't like vinegar I don't like vinaigrettes I like a raspberry vinaigrette also that's sweeter um like yeah I really really don't like I don't, I don't like tomatoes very much I mean I'll eat ketchup I'll eat tomatoes I'll eat ketchup I'll eat salsa I like the I like that stuff but like I'm not a huge tomato guy. Um, I think Italian food is pretty weak for me. Pat is busy with his list of L takes. We got to do a full, like, thing at some point. My wife's favorite food is carbonara. Favorite food is carbonara. I'm sorry. Italian food is, is D tier for me. I Just my opinion. Feel free to disagree. I love you all very much still. Okay, who remembers yesterday on stream and in the stream recap, there was a person in my chat and in my community named Razor, and he won a catch event, and it was awesome. It turns out... Razor, same person who won that catch event that day, later went on in that same exact day to encounter a shiny Riolu in the Safari Zone, and it fled. So Razor, my fucking heart goes out to you, soldier. That is unfortunate. I'm. You hate to see it. That that actually, it you know, talk about a rough ending to what could have been a really cool day. Hopefully, just take the good and the bad. It hurts, man. Sorry to see it. Why even shiny hunt in the safari zone? Shiny hunting for real in the safari zone is literally the most efficient and best way to do it, man. Um, it's it's literally like, it is the, the fastest way, the most efficient way, even considering the fleas, um, it is the best way to shiny hunt real in the entire game. Uh, it's really important to understand that there's not not every you know there's not that many pokemon that are like that but things like riolu um things like i think apom as well there are certain pokemon where it is literally the best to shunt them you'll save so much time and so much money um by shutting them in the safari zone even factoring in the fleas let me go collect a little bit of pokey that i have in my p in my gtl i don't have that much stocked up but like you know it's around 250k or so i mean i'll take it bumps up the numbers a little bit makes it look a little healthier on the po pokey end stack here it is, boys. 59,000 encounters. An absolutely massive milestone. That actually means absolutely nothing, and the shiny's never happening. True, boys. Copium. Uh, Pat, super random question. But will a lucky red dragon and lucky gold dragon ever come back into the game? So the really easy way to see if a vanity will ever come back is by searching it up and then seeing if it's seasonal or not. See how lucky gold dragon says on it limited? That means it's a limited time vanity, and it will never come back into the game ever again. These were only released during this new year new year event in february 2024 and it's only in those sealed, sealed products and it will never come back never ever ever um if a vanity says it's seasonal if you look up flaming motorcycle it says seasonal halloween item that means it will return to the game every year in the gift shop also if you google um i have a vanity guide if you google like vanity guide pokemo um i do have a vanity that breaks down the because there's a shocking amount of like different kinds of vanities right it's all color coded as well so if you go to like my 
vanity box we see gold vanities these are generally all limited time gift shop vanities red vanities like this are generally limited time event only um open from sealed product but some of these might be seasonal so like for example yeah the futu the futu futo that's a seasonal vanity but it still has the red logo so these are red equals open from uh sealed product and that could be limited or it could be seasonal green means it's from the gift shop so like over here any of these like you could get at any time um white means it's or gray means like bought from a pokemon and there's even there's more than there's more complicated stuff than that um but once again i have a guide on this so if you want to look more into this i do have a video guide covering vanities in, in more detail fuck someone asked what's the pokemon in-game tutorial like what tutorial kek w um so the only thing we have for like a tutorial in game is the faq that's like and even this is like mostly about like random tech stuff about the game like my character is stuck what do i do what does script missing mean how do i find a shiny like there are zero tutorials in pokemon pretty much none that i can think of aside from like the general storyline tutorials right um yeah, I literally, I don't know if there's any tutorials within Pokemon that like, actually none. Actually none. Open alpha, what the fuck, 12 year old game? I also don't know why that's the case or why they still consider themselves. So yeah, technically, what state of development is Pokemon in? Currently open alpha. That means many features are not complete and are actively being worked on. I don't know how this is still considered to be the case, how it's technically still an open, I have no idea. Like, we're technically not in beta, and that's a question. I... Feels arbitrary at that point. Um, I don't know if it... I don't think it really matters. Maybe it's, it's just a specific classification where we're missing, like, main Pokemon storyline stuff. I don't know. It seems a little silly. Pat is the tutorial. I... To be fair, I actually don't think it's that bad of a game for... Or ba that bad of a thing for a game to have no in-game tutorials and for the community to provide those tutorials via videos um forum posts like there's so many guides out there nowadays for pokemon that's awesome um i don't think it's that bad to actually have a game be self like community guided if that makes sense um but i wish there was a little more i would say i think i don't we don't need stuff to be explained within pokemon what we need is players to be bumped into the right direction we need a little like players need a little more because how do you set goals? I always say the main way to keep playing Pokemon is to set your own goals. How do you set goals if you don't even know like what your options are? How do you set goals if you don't know what endgame content looks like? How how do you set goals if you don't know what goals to set? And that's what I try to I, I try to solve that problem with videos like 63 things to do, top 10 endgame goals, top five post-game goals. I really try to and I try to encourage and show off different goals and creativity things like there's so much you can do, but how, it's like, imagine like a new player starts playing Minecraft for the first time ever. And like, you're like, okay, like that's why they added the Ender Dragon in Minecraft, right? The Ender Dragon was literally added so that players had like an end game goal thing to go do. Um, but even then, I don't know, but there's nothing that really directs you towards that. Maybe it, it can be fine. And this is like an arbitrary thing that like new gamers were just getting used to. and It's actually fine. I don't know. I think, um, I think a little more i think a flash of something at the beginning of pokemon would be nice so like or even like a small a small tutorial at the very beginning of the game like if it's like kind of like black and white right if or black and white too right if professor oats like throw out like a shiny mincino and was like hey um there's shinies in pokemon but only the coolest of players have them they're one out of 30k that would make so many new players be like oh shit I want to go get one. Oh, that's so sick. That's so cool, you know? Bro, I just finished the storyline yesterday, and they made the ho fight so hard for no reason. Like, holy... Dude, it's tough. As, like, I can confidently say, that ho fight is really tough if you aren't prepared for it. Even the Gyarados fight can be really, really, really hard. Really quick tip for players who are still doing those storylines, especially the Johto storyline. I think the Johto, Johto probably has the hardest storyline in Pokemon, but the easiest Elite Four, if that makes sense. But you have two boss fights in Johto that are very tough um, with the Gyarados boss fight and the ho -Oh one. What I'll say is you have to abuse the fact that both of those Pokemon have a four times weakness. So you've got to bring a discharge Pokemon to Gyarados that will make your life so much easier and save you so much stress. And then you've got to bring a rock slide Pokemon to Ho-Oh. 
four times aoe moves it's going to kill the adds that they spawn um that shit is huge yeah the and then for like uh yeah the garatina fight is pretty tough as well in Sinnoh, you could use a, I would recommend Vanillix with Blizzard. Vanillix with Snow Warning ability in Blizzard usually clears the Garatina fight. Any Rock Slide Mon clears the Ho-Oh fight. And then any Discharge Mon like Ampharos in Johto clears the Gyarados fight. Okay, I get this question a lot. Someone asked, how many, what's your guesstimate? We don't have actual numbers. What is your guesstimate of the player count for this game? Okay. Normally what I do for this is I look at the PvP matches played you can look at the gtl listings the pvp matches you're, you're never really going to get a full picture but you can just get the best number of guesstimate you can so pvp matches it's towards the end of july right and these matches are for this month so there has been three hundred and seventy six thousand matches played just in ou for this month and how many players even represent the pvp player base probably around 10 percent, i would guess Let's say the PvP player base is around 10 to 20% of players, and the average PvP player plays like 5 to 10 games a day, and that's on the high, high end, you know? Um, so if we take that math with that knowledge, right? 376,000. We take that, we divide that by 10 games a day, which is ridiculous. Um, that would be 37, 37,600 just pvp players um i, I it, it gets ridiculous it wouldn't surprise me now that's that's for the whole month that's not like oh players online but it wouldn't surprise me if this number you times this by like 10 or times it by like eight or something like that it wouldn't surprise me this sounds about right like it wouldn't surprise me if we get around three to four hundred thousand players logged in a month right i think that's actually probably fair um, each game needs two players, so it's two times. Yeah, that's also, yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if Pokemon pulls around 500,000 500, to 1 million different players a month. 1 million? Really? I don't know. Probably, I'd say three to 500k. I'd say three to 500k. I think that's actually fair. Um, I'd say three to 500k or so players, different players logged in a month. And then in terms of like concurrent players, I think concurrent drops a lot. Concurrent becomes like, or like players like logged in at the same time, probably like 20 to 40K is usually, yeah. but even it, it depends on the time of year, depends on like certain events. I think we reach like 50K to 100K, um, certain big events, certain big times, 100K is kind of high, but like, I think during low week times in Pokemon, we probably have 20,000 players online at a time, maybe at the lowest 15K online at, at, at any time. And then um, average online, I'd say average online players for Pokemon, as a guesstimate, probably around 30 to 50K on average during big events, probably 50 to 80, something like that, my, my best guess. All right, here it is, fellas. After a long, hard worked journey, we are officially double rate dried. 60,000 encounters dry, not any closer to a shiny than we were yesterday, but I still have one thing. I still have hopium, okay? I can still believe that the RNG gods are not against me, and it's simply in the eggs, and it's on the way, okay? Very soon. Shiny soon. True. Copium. All right, fellas. Quick alpha check. No shalpha. Maybe, maybe, maybe at 90k dry, fellas. What makes the listings of GTL yellow and red? That's a good question. Um, so sometimes, a yellow or red listing, yellow could indicate that it might be slightly overpriced and then red could indicate that it's severely overpriced sometimes it's correct sometimes it's not it just depends like this probably means that someone bought out focus sashes or bought up like a ton of focus sashes for example um it just depends certain items are going to have that we can actually just scroll through what's a recent one for example it gen generally yellow means that that item might be slightly overpriced and red means it's largely overpriced but sometimes if an item moves up in price too quickly it just it's just gonna like show that it's red or yellow even if that even if that price actually is the price that it's going for um it just needs some time time to adjust honestly fossils might be a good one let's go check well no so we were looking at the newly listed things and this showed yellow, right? To let me know, it might, it might be slightly overpriced and it was actually 100% correct, right? If I look up Root Fossil, there's a, there's a couple that are a decent bit cheaper. Um, so it's, it's good that instead of just buying 
like the newest thing if i was just browsing like instead of like just spam clicking this to buy it as a new player i actually search up the item sort by cheapest price and make sure to take the time to do that this is a great question does expert lures help to hunt zapdos yes absolutely um people always ask like ask, hey, hey like, why do you use expert lures they don't increase your chance of getting a legendary like isn't that a waste and no they don't increase your physical chance of getting a legendary the rate stays the same however they increase the amount of encounters you get per hour right so like if you go from you know getting 300 encounters per hour to 320 well now it's going to take you less time and save you a significant amount of time um yeah i, I think i think um using expert lures to, is like super worth it to hunt the legendaries they're also pretty cheap in my opinion using expert lures per hour should cost you around 15,000 pokey in per hour which to a new player isn't nothing so it's something to consider but it's it's going to save you a lot of time um 15k per hour is like super worth it in my opinion for the save time versus like something like legendary lures or premium lures those are going to run you like four to six hundred k per hour so those become super not worth it expert lures are legit nice and consistent that's so funny. I didn't know that was a thing. People are saying that um, Murkrow, Murkrow has a move called Punishment, and it's listed as an egg move, but apparently no other flying egg group Pokemon can actually learn it in Pokemon Mo, so you just can't breed it onto it? That's so weird. So it's listed as an egg move, but you can't actually physically get it in the game. Volibee could pass it, but Volibee's female only. Ah, that's really interesting. Huh. That is a... I've never heard of that. What a cool little dilemma. That is a weird little... Good call, chat. That's funny. Here, if I search on the GTL... Yep, Murkrow has move and then do punishment. Nothing comes up. That's so interesting. Yeah, Mist was saying in chat... The, that's so funny. The only way, that is so weird. The only way to get Punishment Murkrow would be to win a Murkrow from a catch event and then ask for the egg move as a prize. That's so weird. That is so, what, a, what an extra tier of rare Pokemon. That's so weird. This is the definition of you learn something new every day in Pokemon, man. That That's, yeah, next Murkrow event, we all gotta try to, or like next time there's a, um, pvp reward where they give away a murkrow i hilariously might have to go really hard for that because I, I that's such a cool pokemon to own like what a niche thing to to like that's so interesting what does punishment even do i have i don't think it's good i have no idea all we know is that it's it's apparently like impossible to get so we're all super interested in it but it's probably not even good this attached power increases the more target has powered up with stat changes yeah i it's not that can't be good that can't actually be worth it um yeah, PvP rewards. And next time there's a R Murkrow PvP reward, I will 100% grind for it. That's so interesting. This is a great question. Anything that should be added back to the game that was removed slash changed? I was sitting here... I actually... I can't think of anything. Aside from Little Cup, maybe. Little Cup would be cool. Little Cup used to be... You used to be able to go to... um matchmaking sign up and just queue for Little Cup. It was like... A, like you, you. It was like officially supported. There was a queue for it and everything. Um, but it wasn't, wasn't enough players, so they discontinued it. But I feel like now it might be, it might be different. It might be better. Um, I can't think of anything, dude. I, like, I, I feel like the devs do a really good job when it comes to, like, removing content or, like, changing. Like, I, I do agree with most of their changes, man. Obviously, I can sit here and critique the game they've made. Like, you can always do that hindsight and stuff. But, like, they do a really fucking good job, man. Um, I, I can't think of anything. If you buy a fossil off the GTL and then revive it, does it count towards your OT decks? Yes, it does. That's your really it, honestly the fossils are probably some of the easiest OT decks Pokemon's you can go for because of that. Um, however, that's what I'm gonna call it today, guys. A quick little five-hour Saturday stream. Nothing crazy, but want to get some encounters. Push over 60k today, which is pretty cool. I will see you guys Monday for our actual big strong push post 60,000 encounters thank you guys for watching these streams if you find yourself enjoying these streams please make sure to click the like button it helps out ridiculously with the algorithm it's kind of op dislike if you didn't enjoy it that's totally okay subscribe to the channel for daily pokemon videos uh follow me on twitch for streams like this usually monday through friday probably a bunch extra throughout shiny wars discord down below if you're interested in seeing when i'm live and talking to some really cool people and if you want to go above and beyond and support my content allow me to play pokemon allow me to learn about the game grind with the game and hopefully make good guides and entertaining content for you guys with that information 
the YouTube memberships, Twitch Primes, Twitch subs, and PayPal slash Venmo do allow me to do this. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you guys later. And just have fun. Play Pokemon. Enjoy yourself. Play whatever game you enjoy today. Have a great day. I'll see you guys later. Peace of Reno. Hey, thank you so very much for watching until the very end of the video. That means the world to me. And everyone on this list means even more to me for helping support the channel every single day. Thanks so much.